It is believed by many that 3,300 years ago, Moses and 70 elders scaled the mountain of Sinai. And not only did they receive the Torah, but therein the divinity, the 72nd being, descended down in a storm cloud and gave them from mouth to ear an oral tradition, one that could not be refudiated or ignored because it contained the deeper secrets and aspects of everything that was given in a tangible sense. This tradition, this reception, is called by that name, Kabbalah. But what is the Kabbalah? We know it now as Jewish mysticism. We know it as a strange metaphysics or an extensive idea of what it means to be spiritually involved in the Abrahamic faiths. But to me, it is everything. It's everything I ever wanted. I didn't find Kabbalah. Kabbalah reached out to me at a time that I needed it. I found within it an absurd symbology, an amazing mysticism, a belief that goes beyond the bounds of reality paradoxical equations that ask of me so much effort, that ask me to know something beyond myself. And what is that thing that it asks me to know? Well, first and foremost, the divinity. And second, my own life. It compares everything, everything that I could imagine, everything that I can feel, think, and touch, and wonder about is a part of me and is a part of God. And for that, Kabbalah is such a beautified thing. It's such a wondrous thing. And even then, after all those stages are covered, Kabbalah asked me to be a magician. It asked me to know the world. It asked me to know mysticism to the extent that I might do something with it. It asked me to know spirituality and the religion that I might do something with it. So today, I'm going to talk simply about Kabbalah. When I was younger, Kabbalistic mysticism was not what I anticipated I would be into. In fact, I spent a great deal of time interested in general hermeticism and, well, magic. But one day, the Zohar just showed up into my life. It just appeared. And after reading it and treating it seriously, I realized that Zohar and Kabbalistic metaphysics is much like a slow relationship. It's like opening a door and you can only open it so much. You can only have so much revealed. And the more and more you commit, the more and more you learn, the more and more you do, it opens a little further. Sometimes you get a worse idea of what you're dealing with, but sometimes you get a better idea of what you're dealing with. And this dealing is what we call Shekinah. The Divine Presence, or Shekinah, very, very lightly entertains itself by being slow to us knowing it. It wants us to take our time. And that isn't because we can't handle it necessarily, it's because we need to handle it better. The Orthodox Jews once had a decree, and they still do, that you cannot learn Kabbalah until you are 40 years old and well established with a family and friends and a life. Now, the reason for this might seem absurd to some individuals, but it's because the Kabbalah has the capacity to take one out of reality. It has the ability to remove oneself from normalcy. It can take away life. And it was never intended to do that. Because of this transition, we must have some bounds, some regard to the human experience. And you might wonder, why do we even have those restrictions? It is because all things that are accomplished in the Kabbalah occur strictly 
and directly through experience and through doing and through the mitzvahs and through being present. So it's not a ridiculous thing. In fact, it is a human thing. It asks to be realized within the world. It asks to be natural. It asks to be simple. Even though we could say it is absolutely nothing but simple. The Kabbalah further likes to give us opportunity to experience life in a way that we otherwise wouldn't. It provides us an opportunity to, well, find spirituality in the mundane things, in eating food, in being generous, in giving, in communication. And this is one of the greatest things about this mystical system. For that, I often wonder what it is that I am accomplishing. What am I doing? What are you accomplishing? What are you doing? How do you meet that expectation? How do you meet that end? Where are you going? Not to be accusative by any means, but to be literal. Why are you here? What are you looking for? Give yourself the room you need to find a personal happiness. Give yourself the room you need to find a legitimate reason to exist. Because existence in this time and space, for this temporary moment, because you will not be here forever, is a gift. And I want you to enjoy it.